Yet another Republican congressman is choosing not to run for re-election in the current political environment. Uh, that's the good news, but we have got new data giving you more reasons, more of a warning to not become complacent about whatever it is that you think is likely to happen in November, because the deck is incredibly stacked against the sort of uh, outcome that I at least am hoping for. Uh, but first, we're going to talk about Representative Ryan Costello in Pennsylvania. Now, he is in a district that is considered D plus two. It trends very slightly Democratic. Um, but that does not mean that he could not win re-election in a normal year. I mean, a sitting congressman has a huge money advantage, a huge name recognition advantage. He's got the political machine that put him into power in the first place. But even just with the two-point advantage of the Democrats right now, in 2018, he's a little bit scared. So he says, uh, in reference to why he is uh, not going to be running for re-election, Ryan Costello said, It was a combination of factors. It has been a deeply personal decision and evaluation. But those who love me agree, and those who I love agree with it. I will not be running for re-election. I like a little poetry in my yeah. surrender speech. Uh, he went on to cite the very angry political environment as one of his reasons for the decision, saying, Whether it's President Trump's alleged affair with adult film star Stormy Daniels, or passing an omnibus uh, spending bill that the president threatens to veto after promising to sign, it's very difficult to move forward in a constructive way today. I like that both of those are Trump's fault. Yeah. Like the, the, the two examples he gave are his own president's fault. And by the way, the announcement comes days after the Supreme Court denied a request to block the impl implementation of a new court-ordered map in Pennsylvania, an ungerrymandered map which uh, if they had been able to overturn that, then maybe they could have protected him a little bit more. Um, so that is the good news. He is going to not be running for re-election, which raises the possibility at least that a Democrat could take over the seat inside of Pennsylvania. I think that Ryan Costello has decided not to run for re-election because of the fact that Pennsylvania will be slightly less gerrymandered uh, yeah. compared to before, yeah. where he had an advantage, even though the district that he's representing leans slightly to the left. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't hear him speak out about the divisiveness of Donald Trump and his administration prior to this uh, Supreme Court decision. Mm -hmm. So um, please spare me the the little violin as you talk <laughs> about how uh, y you know it's it's difficult to get anything done and it's and you know. President Trump concerns you. If you were really concerned, you would have spoken out earlier. Um, with that said, though, I, I am happy with what the Supreme Court did in this case, and I am happy that gerrymandering is um, an issue that people are discussing and something's being done about it because it was a huge problem and it did uh, overwhelmingly support the agenda of Republicans in various states, especially in, in, in Pennsylvania. Now, to be clear, Democrats try to do it as well, mm -hmm. but Republicans have been much more successful in gerrymandering. And if you look at how some of the districts were drawn in the state, I mean, people would make fun of it because it was like these crazy spiral, you know, yeah. crazy zigzag lines everywhere. And now it'll be a lo little more representative of the constituents in the state. Uh, with that said, good riddance by Costello. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It seems like pretty clear just pragmatic political calculation that exactly. he wasn't going to win. Uh, that said, don't get too excited. I know some people are getting excited. I know you're worried about complacency. Do not be complacent because although it looks like a lot of these elections are swinging for the Democrats, it's entirely possible that that will be the case, at least in some cases, maybe in a bunch of cases. But the sort of wave that's expected is going to butt up against the fact that we do not have some sort of neutral playing field when it comes to elections. We have across the board with only slight things like this Pennsylvania working to fight against it, a very biased, in some ways rigged uh, system of elections. And so let's talk about the way things sort of should be if things were fair and then how things actually are. Democrats need a net gain of 24 seats to take back the House of Representatives this year. In a typical election, according to an analysis of midterm data from 1946 to 2014 by a political scientist, if they were to win on average the popular vote by six points, they would gain 27 seats and thus have an advantage. If you win the popular vote by six points, that's a pretty strong win. Win. It means that the country largely is in support of your agenda, not the Republicans. It ain't easy, but it can happen. It does happen from time to time for the Democrats or for the Republicans. But that's a typical election. That's not the elections that we have had or will have uh, recently. According to a new Brennan Center report, a six point win with today's political maps would earn Democrats just 13 seats, not even close to winning a majority in the House of Representatives. In order to win back the House, Democrats would now need to win by 11 points, almost twice what they have historically needed to win by. And that is obviously uh, a much harder bar to pass. Let's bring up this chart. You're gonna see a comparison of those two, the traditional model and uh, the uh, the more recent model and what they need to do to actually win. 
And so look, if they can win by 11 or 12 or 14 points, they're going to do just fine. They will have the majority. But that's a lot tougher. And by the way, it means that even if they win, and they win overwhelmingly, they might have a majority, but they will have a smaller, narrower majority than the Republicans have had, that, that typically a winning party has had in the past, which means that even if they take back the House, there's going to be some votes that they will not be able to win on. That's disconcerting, and that's because of gerrymandering and a number of other things. The system is fundamentally messed up, and we've seen progress over the past few months in Pennsylvania and North Carolina, although in both of those areas the GOP is attempting to fight back in what I would consider incredibly immoral and unethical fashion. Um, but that's just two states. There's a lot of states in this country. There's, there's dozens, dozens of states, and we need to fight back in all of them to make things more fair. Hard to disagree with that. You just watched the video by the Young Turks, the home of the revolution. If you'd like to get the full show, come join us and become a member. TYTnetwork.com slash join.